we've got more problems, I think, on the Dawn Butler situation. Uh, after the two officers that pulled up that car in which Labour MP Dawn Butler was a passenger were completely exonerated by the Met Police, uh, who said that they'd acted uh, perfectly correctly and uh, within their duties. Um, the Association of Black Police Officers has uh, sort of rebuffed that and said, no, 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 uh, there's systematic racism in the force and it has to be addressed. So we're getting mix mixed messages there. And I think that this situation will not please my next guest. That's uh, Norman Brennan, retired police officer of 31 years standing and director of the Law and Order Foundation. Hello, Norman. Yeah, good morning, Jim. Um, what I mean, this is infuriating, isn't it? I, I was rather encouraged when the force, uh, rather surprisingly, uh, leapt to the defence of those two officers that pulled up that car that Dawn Butler was in when she made such a song and dance about the fact I'd been racially profiled, even though she was sitting in a car with tinted windscreen. So uh, not sure how they could have even seen what colour she was. Uh, now we have the uh, National Association of Black Officers saying, no, 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 uh, this is a terrible incident and uh, the police is full of systematic racism. I mean, what's the truth of the situation and why would black police officers try to undermine the force for which they work? Well, this uh, police inspector um, that's just taken over as the chair of the Black Police Association is telling lies. Now, when you're a police officer, if you're going to make an allegation against anybody, the same as any member of the public, you provide the evidence. You don't just say something, because if you say something that's not true, it's a lie. If you say something that's a blatant lie that's untrue, it's slander. If you write it down, it's libel. Mm -hmm. The two police officers that actually stopped um, uh, Dawn Butler on absolute everything textbook. Now, Dawn Butler, actually, uh, the weekend, uh, herself made two errors. What she did, she said it was VE day. Uh, instead of VJ Day, yeah. she also spent the she also spelt the word soldier wrong as well. Two errors that are forgivable. However, a police officer that is doing a PNC check in a moving vehicle and presses the wrong digit, an error similar to Dawn Butler, mm -hmm. is racist. Now you tell me if this is not an utter nonsense of certain black people using a narrative to incite racial hatred and when police officers do that without providing any evidence in my books kevin and i know the law and the police discipline code inside and out mm. that has to be discreditable conduct as a police officer well uh there's another story out today norman uh the black police inspector who said he was pulled up uh, after being racially profiled by white officers they stopped him in his car on his way home i think after he'd done a at night's work. Uh, his name is Charles uh, Ehekloya. Uh, yes. uh, and uh, he uh, uh, complained about being racially profiled and was again told by the force, no, 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 these officers were doing their job. Your car uh, was seen to be driving erratically, but there was nothing wrong. He wasn't driving erratically, it turned out. Uh, uh, so nothing, to move along, nothing to see here. He now says he's going to sue the police force uh, because he has no other, other option because they're not taking action on his complaint of racism. If you're driving a motor vehicle on a road um, and you're driving in excess of the speed or you're driving in such a way that you come to notice of a police officer, be that that you're an on-duty or an off-duty police officer, a police officer under the Road Traffic Act has got every right to give you a tug, as we call it, mm -hmm. pull you over and find out, A, if you've been drinking, B, if it's your car, or what, what, why you're driving in the manner that you are. It has absolutely nothing to do with racism. Now, I can tell you, Kevin, that uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of police officers, including myself, when I've been driving home of a long night shift or I've been on duty, I've actually been stopped by the police. And the reason they've stopped me is because they have an interest. Either my vehicle was blocked as a police officer or whatever, and they went to find out who was driving. Or maybe we were going in a bit excess of the speed limit, and they mm. wanted to know who we are and see whether we're of interest to them or whether they should decide to give us a ticket. This inspector is not above the law. Now, what racial profiling is there 
if you are stopped because the manner you're driving and you happen to be black. So supposing a white police officer had been driving home in the exact same manner as that police black inspector and had been stopped, what would he or she have said? Yeah, you see, I, I, I don't know, Norman. I, mean, I just think it's very strange. This uh, 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 Mr. Hecloyer is a... Uh, a, a police inspector of 22 years standing. Uh, he was pulled over because it was possible that he, that they feared his driving license might not uh, be in order. He might not be insured, and as you say, it's possible that he could have been drinking, like the way uh, uh, officers would cook, pull, pull up any car. Uh, he he now says these were alleged offences that could have ended my whole career. Well, yeah, they would have done if you were guilty of them. Uh, they took one look at him and said, "Oh, sorry, officer," and they realised he was insured, his license was intact. And he wasn't drunk. Uh, why is he saying this kind of incendiary stuff? Why is he now th suing the police force? Uh, th this is the police force for, for whom he works. Does he hate it? Well, I think what the saying is, if you throw as much poo at something, the fan, you're hoping that some will hit it. Well, let me tell you and everyone listening now, is in the Bianca Williams case, the Tom Butler case, the National Police Chair of the Black Police Association and this Met Police Inspector, where the incident took place in May, each of them have been independently assessed, body war cameras have been viewed, and each and every one of those officers have been exonerated. Now, this sort of incident could be referred to the Independent Police Complaints Association, where they would look at it independently. But it, most of these didn't even have to go that far but the police have offered it because these people are black the thing is these black officers the two inspectors uh, i believe are inciting racial hatred they're also causing a lot of discomfort within the police circles because they are making allegations not just against the met but by the national police service of being institutionally racist and they have joined the narrative of Dawn Butler and Bianca Williams and many of the others. And the sad reality is, Kevin, is this, is that the more that they throw at the police of being racist and institutionally racist and being profiled when there is no evidence whatsoever, is picked up by the mainstream media, fortunately talk radio and other radio stations I deal with, give a fair opportunity of someone given an opposing view such as mine. But the damage they are causing on top of the Black Lives Matter narrative of the criminal element that attacking police and threatening wide-scale disorder. These people, police officers, are inciting, in my view, racial hatred, which in turn could cause major widespread public disorder. That is a criminal offence of incitement. You cannot just say something without providing any evidence. And as you have rightly said, they use emotive words, strong words, because the media love that. Mm. But if you use emotive words, strong words, and don't provide any evidence, that is a lie. And if you say it publicly against the police service, that is slander against each of those individual officers that have all been cleared and exonerated. Yeah. It's a disgrace. Uh, I should say, so Inspector Andrew George is the new interim president of the National Black Police Association. He is the person that has made these allegations. Uh, you say he is lying. I'm just, I have to point out he's not here to defend himself. I'm sure he would have something to say about this. We'll probably try and get a hold of him at some point. But I, but I do uh, really take your point. That what, what I find strange is that these are serving officers. I have a vision, possibly uh, I'm too idealistic, but I have a vision of the brotherhood of police officers all involved in the business of fighting crime, particularly here in London where it's a big problem, uh, and all in it together. And yet it seems to me here you have a certain section of the police force, the Black uh, Associate, the Asso National Black Police Officers Association, uh, seem to be at war with the rest of the police. Then we have this other uh, inspector who is suing the police, saying I was racially profiled after the police force said, no, you weren't. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's an internecine war going on, isn't there, in the police force? Well, they're, they're actually undermining policing. 
Um, don't forget, police officers hold a warrant card. They hold an office of carrying out a public duty, and that is to challenge people that they believe are committing a crime to reassure the public and challenge people that they suspect uh, may be carrying weapons or drugs. Now, in all of these stops, the police have acted in accordance with what is commonly known as textbook stops. Mm. How can you say that a police officer is racially profiling you? As I say, let's jump the other side of the fence and just suppose that it was a white sprinter, it was a white MP, it was two white police inspectors that were all stopped, equivalent to these four black individuals just highlighted. There would be no complaint whatsoever of racial profiling. They would have been stopped for all the reasons that these four individuals were stopped. And what they are doing, I'm afraid, they are adding to the narrative of hatred. Now, that in the police service is a discipline offence. And the MP and the sprinter should be ashamed of themselves instead of saying to the police, thank you for doing something that is positive to try and stop gun crime, knife crime, drugs trafficking, and people killing each other. I don't mind you stopping me. They weren't rude. They weren't racist. They didn't assault any of them, bar putting handcuffs on um, uh, the, the Bianca Williams because the vehicle failed to stop. The police done a sh short pursuit and she refused to get out of the vehicle. Again, the police acted proportionally with the force that they used and the words that they used. All of these, all these Kevin, are non-complaints. They are disgraceful complaints and they are undermining policing at the worst possible time that anybody could be doing so. Uh, now, uh, I know you've made your feelings clear uh, in the past about uh, what Dawn Butler did, uh, but let's go over this ground again because we all watched that video, that edited video. We only saw about four minutes, apparently, of about 13 minutes or something. Uh, so we didn't get all of the video. Uh, and uh, she seemed to be relishing the situation, laughing away. Look, I'm being racially profiled, as we said earlier. Uh, hard to see how she was racially profiled in a car with tinted windscreen, tinted windows, because you wouldn't be able to see who was in that car. She wasn't driving. Uh, and I felt sorry for the officers involved. Uh, who got kind of pilloried on a national scale because of that video. What are your thoughts about, is that the way a former shadow cabinet minister ought to behave when confronted by two officers doing their duty? Absolutely not, and you're absolutely right. She started filming it beforehand, and everything that she said afterwards, I've listened to her, I've challenged her, and in fact, she's responded to me. Uh, she was quite rude towards me. That's not a major problem. She was uh, responding to me being very strong against her. You don't, as an MP, um, berate the police. She wasn't racially abused. She wasn't sworn at. She was spoken to friendly. And when a very small error was pointed out, they went on their way. Yet she has made a mountain out of absolutely nothing, not even a molehill. We didn't give her anything to complain about. Yet her story has gone around the world. And what is her story, Kevin? It is the biggest non-story that I have ever seen, yet has got the sort of media coverage of what a terrorist attack would cause. Now, the caveat to all of this, and this is probably the most important point I'm making, and I'll be careful what I say. <laughs> if people like the four individuals that we are discussing at the moment Calls the police, and I know from TSG, the Territorial Support Group in the Met, they're the SHIELD units, and other officers, they are talking about going to other jobs where they're not in confrontation with certain people in the black community, where they won't face all these complaints. Others are thinking of leaving, and those that are saying, sorry, I'm not going to stop any black person anymore. I want to keep my job. I want to go home to my family without years of trauma. And just supposing that happens, and this is the caveat, mm -hmm. and as a result of that, more and more black children and youths assassinate each other. Drugs and knife crime destroy the lives of dozens, if not hundreds, and bring communities to their knees in fear because the police cannot do their job and then decide they won't do the job. 
the police won't take that last bit. But I'm telling you, Kevin, let's think about it. And when you think about what we're talking about, every single one of these complaints, all four of them, are just nothing. They're not even a complaint. Yeah. Yet the damage they're doing is probably the biggest I've seen since the Stephen Lawrence case. Well, it's it's the old story, isn't it? What's what's going on is another attack on stop and search. So Theresa May, in 2014, I think it was, she abandoned stop and search and said it was racist. And then three years later, you know, and quite a few deaths and stabbings and shootings in all our city centres later, stop and search was brought back in quite rightly because it's the only it's one of the effective ways to at least try to curb this problem of violence on our streets so it's about stop and search we need stop and search don't we well we do and Theresa May and the London Mayor um, Sadiq Khan threatened to take the Metropolitan Police to court to ensure that they reduce their stop and search they may actually reduce the stop and search and guess what happened, Kevin? Mm, what? Knife crime, gun crime, assassinations went through the roof. Yep. Communities were screaming out. Mothers were planning funerals instead of futures. So what they then said, both of them, please increase your stop and search. And when you think about what we actually do, I was one police officer out of 140,000 when I was serving. I stopped and searched hundreds and hundreds of young people, young youths, black and white, and I recovered many, many dozens, just one police officer of knives. How many lives do you think I hopefully or possibly saved? Mm. Then equate that with hundreds, what, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of police officers throughout their career seizing a knife that could have killed somebody, they could have lost their life, they could have gone to prison for a long time, possibly the rest of their life. That is what police have to do. It's mm. not the be all end all, but stop and search saves lives. And if the black community and those that we have to stop because it's part of our job, if we didn't stop anybody, it would just be madness. It would be the law of the jungle. We don't want that. The public don't want that. And many people in the black community want the police to do the job that they're doing. They do an outstanding job. They risk their lives and they do that because they want these kids to stop killing each other. We're caught between life and death. And I'm afraid sometimes we do have to stop people. And some of those will be in the black community. If they actually cooperated a bit more, were a little bit more friendly and less vocal, do you know what? We'd probably have a much better relationship. I think uh, you're absolutely right, as usual, Norman. I just find it very, very strange that one of the police force's big problems now is coming from the police itself. You know, that these uh, officers are uh, at war with the rest of the police force, and I don't think that helps at all. But uh, as always, Norman, I'm already getting tweets uh, from people saying that you've hit the nail on the head, on the money again, Norman. Uh, you always strike a, a very good chord with our listeners. You strike a good chord with me as well. Thank you so much for your time. That's Norman Brennan, retired London police officer of 31 years standing and director of Law and Order Foundation, talking common sense as usual.